Hi guys, you might be surprised. We're not talking about the volcanic, the potential volcanic eruption in Iceland in the town of Grindavik today. Because today I want to talk to you about a volcano, but about a way more dangerous one, a way more scary one. And maybe a few of you might not even heard of it until now. I mean, we all have heard about Yellowstone and what might happen if Yellowstone erupts. But did you know that there is a super volcano in Italy that is threatening to erupt right now? And guys, I tell you, if this thing blows off, I think it will end all wars that are currently going on and it'll be devastating. So I think it is necessary to report about that. I will still keep you updated about everything that's going on in Iceland. But guys, listen to this. I think you should be informed and you should know about that one. So forget about Italy's most famous active volcano, Mount Vesuvius, which destroyed Pompeii in 79 AD. I'm not talking about that one. I mean, that one has been erupting on and off, but the most dangerous volcanic threat in Italy right now, and not only for Italy, for the whole world, is one that is not very well known. It's called Campi Flegrei, or the Flegrean Fields in English. And this is a plain, it's very unassuming, and it stretches 200 kilometers, that's 125 miles, under the Bay of Naples and the islands of Capri and Ischia. To the outskirts of the city of Naples is a giant caldera or depression left by a supervolcano some two million years ago. Campi Flegrei is a large dormant volcano near Naples and it has a history of eruptions, guys. And the last one was in 1538. And recently, and here comes the scary part, and we all know what that means from what's going on in Iceland underneath the Swartzengi power plant where a magma chamber is filling up and is the land is rising. And so here now at the Campi Flegrei, we have an increased seismic activity as of recently and rising land levels have raised concerns. Campi Flegrei is now the site of multiple volcanoes that have been active for 39,000 years, many of which lie underwater. But this area is populated with villas, small villages, and shopping malls, and it's home to 800,000 people. And they're building just a new hospital. So more than 500,000 of the locals live in what Italy's Civil Protection Agency has deemed a red zone, an area encompassing 18 towns that's at highest risk in the event of an eruption. An additional 3 million residents in Naples live immediately outside of the eastern edge of the caldera, according to the Civil Protection Agency. So we're not talking about a small fishing town like Grindavik, where it was easy when they felt the earthquakes were getting too many and, and too high. They could evacuate the town within 20 minutes. Everyone was safe. We're talking about a huge area with millions of residents. And they had the last major eruption in 1538. It has created a new mountain in the bay. And seismic activity in the area has been intensifying since December of 2022, according to Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology. And experts fear that that volcano could be reawakening after generations of rest. So that that densely populated region, which is less than 50 kilometers, that's 31 miles from Vesuv, Vesuvius, that other volcano, it, it is prone to a seismic phenomenon 
known as the Brady seism, and that's defined by cycles of uplift and gradual lowering of the ground. So the last time the region saw such activity was in 1984, when the ground rose 3.5 meters, that's 11.5 feet, before it began a slow descent accompanied by seismic activity, activity similar to what is happening in the area right now. And currently, the area is in a state of positive Brady seism. So when the ground moves upward, the entire volcanic zone is also experiencing a surge in earthquakes. And that has rattled the nerves and sent the residents seeking safety out into the streets. So in September, the strongest earthquake in 40 years struck the region and a 4.2 magnitude quake was followed by one of a similar strength just days later. Listen to this. In this year, in 2023, Campi Fligri has already recorded 3,450 earthquakes and 1,118 of those earthquakes have occurred in August alone. So this is more than triple the previous year's total. And we all know what that means, right? Since we've been watching the Iceland potential eruption. More than 500 earthquakes occurred in October and the strongest was 4.0 magnitude, followed by a dozen of aftershocks. So until the beginning of May, the quakes were almost all under 3.0 magnitude. And many experts think the local population should be better prepared to cope with the seismic activity and the possibility of an eruption. On October 5th, the country's Civil Protection Agency laid out an updated evacuation plan, which calls for the movement of half a million people over a 27-hour period of time on roads many locals fear won't accommodate such intense traffic. The last time that such a plan had been studied was in 2019 and the findings showed the evacuation plan was lacking. And we know from history that trying to evacuate people in a very short period of time, if you only have one big highway or an escape route, even when you look at the Ukraine war, when the people were trying to get out of Kiev, you look at the highway and it was clogged. The cars were standing, nothing was moving. So this is a well-known phenomenon. And if you want to walk on foot, you're not getting very far if a supervolcano is erupting. The head of the Italian Civil Protection Agency, um, Carlo Doglioni, he, um, gave a testimony on the potential outcomes of the seismic activity before the Italian government's Environmental Commission's lower chamber in September. So he said... There are two possible scenarios relating to the evolution of the situation in the Campi Flegre. The best is that the ongoing Brady seism crisis ends as happened in 1983 to 84. The worst though is an eruption similar to that of 1538. It's an evolution that we don't know and that we are monitoring. So they don't know guys, they do not know. Dr. Giuseppe Di Natale, he's the research direct director at the International Civil Protection Agency. He said the current cycle of uplift is associated with pressure below the surface of the caldera. We don't know exactly the depth of the increase of pressure. It could be between zero and 3.5 kilometers, he said. There are two hypotheses as to what could be causing the current increase in seismic activity at Campli Flegre. The first and potentially most dangerous possibility is that it could be an intrusion of magma coming from the magma chamber located about eight kilometers deep. The second, which he said is more likely, is that there is a large degassing of gases created by the magma coming from the deep magma chamber. The degassing at the same depth as the magma chamber is what he believes has caused the ground to rumble. So he says the problem is the rocks. 
the shallow rocks cannot hold high levels of pressure. So if the pressure increases too much, there could happen complete fracturing of the rocks, which is generally the cause of the eruption of a volcano, guys. And there's another statement of a retired professor of geochemistry at the University of Naples, and he's an expert on Brady seism. And he agrees that the crater is degassing, and he doesn't think that the rising land is due to magma alone. These gases, he believes, are caused by the magma below the caldera receding, not rising. But he said it is impossible to know exactly what is happening. He says we can use statistics to create models, but we cannot predict the natural process because we do not know all of the variables in play. So in spite of objections by the local residents that drilling could trigger even more seismic activity, he won approval in 2009 to lead a team of volcano experts from 18 countries in 2012 on a mission to drill a pilot hole 501 meters, that's 1,644 feet, deep into the caldera in an attempt to see exactly what was going on. But unfortunately, the mayor of Naples at the time, he halted the drilling project before it began because he was having concerns for the population. So in 2012, after the mayor left office, the project was briefly reinstated by the new mayor, but then funding had dried up and only the borehole was drilled. So they are concerned about the citizens, but they don't do testing. Sounds weird to me. So the professor says there is no plan to resume drilling and the current city government told him that there are areas of greater concern from a budgetary standpoint when it comes to city projects, including developing better evacuation plans, both for Mount Vesuvius and the Campi Flegre area. Well, it's good to have evacuation plans, but it also would be good to know what is going on and let the scientists do some work. I mean, that is plain stupid to me. Let me know what you think, guys. But what is a super volcano and what makes them different from other volcanoes? Supervolcanoes are among the most perplexing and least understood natural threats in the world. What distinguishes a supervolcano from an ordinary volcano is the amount of volcanic material it has ejected during past eruptions, a reflection of the volcano's explosive power. A supervolcano is one that has ejected more than 240 cubic miles of material and reached a level 8, the highest threat, on the Volcano Explosivity Index, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. That index measures how much debris is ejected, at what height, and for how long the eruption lasts. Yellowstone, for example, which erupted 2.1 million years ago, was one of the largest ever known eruptions. The most recent eruptions of other notable supervolcanoes, including Long Valley in California, Toba in Indonesia, and Campi Flegre, were all around the same size. Scientists have a 2,000-year-old record of activity on Campi Flegre. Pillars at the Roman temple of Serapis in the city of Pozzuoli, in the middle of the caldera, which were excavated in the 18th century, show evidence of holes made by molluscus that's revealing the pillars were once underwater. The base of the temple is connected to the sea by a series of underground tunnels, and the rising and falling of the ground caused by Brady seism has resulted in the water flooding and then draining out of the structure, making it possible to observe the seismic phenomenon over time. In 2016, the regional government designated the Campi Flegre area yellow under its warning system, the second of four levels that move from green to red to indicate the danger to the population from the movement of the ground. Italy's Civil Protection Agency said in October it would be moving some parts of the area to next level orange, given the intensity of the recent activity. So, 
the protection agency now has to sign off on the level change, which is expected to do since it's originally petitioned the civil protection agency for the move. Upping the level to orange will allow civil protection agencies to evacuate the area most vulnerable to the effects of Brady Seism and the continuing earthquakes more easily and keep the most vulnerable populations safe. During a meeting with the Civil Protection Agency and the government on November 7th, the Protection Agency also determined that 15,000 buildings, including 125 schools and other academic structures are in the high risk area. A directive will be released November 27th, outlining a new protocol for evacuations drill and potentially moving some institutions from the area temporarily until the current cycle of Brady Seism subsides. So what is the likelihood of an eruption? So parts of the volcano would be weakening due to the effects of Brady Seism, according to a paper published in the scientific journal Communications, Earth and Environment in June. But the situation remains unpredictable. That's what the experts say. Further say, what we expect depends on whether the ground keeps rising. If it carries on moving at its current rate, we expect the number of small earthquakes per day will fluctuate. Over weeks from just to a handful to the swarms of a few hundred events, as felt in mid-August and late September. So any larger magnitude earthquakes are most likely to occur during the swarms. These are the classic signals of crust being stretched to breaking point. However, this does not mean an eruption is inevitable. It's the same for all volcanoes that have been quiet for generations, said I, a study co-author, a volcanologist from the Vesuvius Observatory. He said that in a news release. And he said, Campi Flegrei may settle into a new routine of gently rising and subsiding, as seen at similar volcanoes around the world, or simply return to rest. We can't yet say for sure what will be happen. The important point is to be prepared for all outcomes. A first step toward preparing should be avoiding population increase by prohibiting more construction in Campi Flegrei, which is one of the most developed areas in Italy. So a professor also said that there should be a better evacuation route with wider roads so that people who live in the densely populated area could evacuate within 24 hours. We cannot construct even one more home in the area. Italy's volcano experts are wary about making specific predictions about volcanic eruptions for fear of being held accountable if they are wrong. Seven scientists were convicted of manslaughter for telling residents of La Quia in central Italy not to worry about an increase in seismic activity in 2009. An earthquake that struck a few days after, seven scientists were convicted of manslaughter for telling residents of La Quia in central Italy not to worry about an increase in seismic activity in 2009. An earthquake that struck a few days after one scientist had appeared to say it was okay to relax and have a glass of wine killed more than 300 people. The scientists were eventually acquitted on appeal, but the experience left the scientific community in Italy shaken. So guys, as many of you wanted to see him again, here is little Rudy. He's giving us his thoughts, what he thinks is going to happen. And he agrees with the scientists that more and more evidence is hinting that an eruption could happen very soon. They can't tell if it's going to be a major one, like a super volcano style one or a smaller one, but the threat levels are definitely rising and people are more and more on alert. So that's a story that we will follow up, I think probably on a daily basis as well. So Rudy and I, this was our introduction to the Campi Flegrei. And we both still hope for the best that nothing will happen and everything will go back to normal. 
So guys, this is my update about Campi Flegre. So we should monitor what is going to happen. If you like videos like this, check out all my information that I have released about the potential eruption that could occur in Iceland in the town of Grindavik and the northern area of Grindavik at any time. A lot has happened there, like deep sinkholes, ruptures, and homes damaged. The port has been sinking. So check this out. I'll put the videos in the end screen. If you're interested in the Titan submersible disaster, there's lots of new findings. It's, it's a bigger scandal than ever thought how that company was lying to get customers, paying customers into that submersible. And if you like this video, guys, please leave it a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon in one of my videos. Bye-bye.